ministry. Yes, I praise the name of Jesus. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are watching me from this global village. Pastor Francis Karuga is my name, um, a pastor of Grace Covenant Church. Uh, now uh, bringing a message to you, courtesy of the On Fire Agape Ministry. And I thank God for the privilege uh, to, to be used of God to communicate the gospel message. Praise God. And so um, today we are going to uh, look at the book of Romans chapter 4. Uh, verses 23 going downwards and uh, today well, as even as we communicate the word of God we do so in view of the season that we are in the season uh, that is basically referring to the moment when our Lord was being arrested uh, when he was being uh, crucified when he was buried and then he rose again now you know I'm talking about the Good Friday and the Easter Monday all right, so let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Your word is the blood of life. That is what we cannot do without. You, you died for us. You gave out uh, your life, O oh Jehovah, the life of your son for us. And most of King of Agri, as if that was not enough, you have given out this life to us even when we believe in Jesus Christ. Thank you, my father, for uh, this formation of the church through which now we continue to receive consolation. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing and what you'll do thereafter. We thank you for being a true master. Be glorified now even as using me as a vessel to communicate your gospel message. Thank you, Lord, for the revelation knowledge that is freely flowing by the power of your Holy Spirit. You worship us, you bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 4, verse 23, the Bible says, Now, it was not written for his sake alone, that it was imputed to him, but also for us it shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Praise God. Now, Apostle Paul, when he was talking about Abraham, he was very much careful to connect us, the church, to that faith of Abraham, because Abraham lived without the law, and therefore we too now as Gentiles, we have been converted into a family, not through the law, but by faith in Christ Jesus, and therefore we are receiving salvation courtesy of what God has done with his son, and that is basically what is called God's grace. Amen. And so he is saying that Abraham and his righteousness um, it's not written for him alone, but also it's written for our sake, uh, who shall as well be imputed. The righteousness shall be credited unto us uh, when we believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. You see, righteousness comes from God when we believe that it is him who raised Jesus up from the dead. Praise God. And so, uh, verse 25 is therefore telling us who delivered, who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. Now, what happened to Jesus? Jesus was delivered, was delivered to the cross because of our offenses. Now, there are various chapters we can help you to see at your own time how he was delivered the book of matthew 26 the book of matthew 27 uh, uh, basically records how he was arrested in the night of thursday and uh, on friday there are various episodes that took place uh, there is um, a communication between the chief priest uh, the scribes, the leaders of israel the religious men and the judas on how to Kill Jesus, so there is a, an exchange of money. There is, cor there is corruption here. Uh, basically, uh, we are geared toward killing uh, the righteous one. And eventually, we also see that uh, Judas, when he realized that Jesus is already condemned, uh, Judas went ahead and killed himself uh, just as a way of trying to cover his own mess, as we also do sometimes when we make mistakes. 
uh, instead of trying to find out a genuine solution, we go ahead and, uh, and commit a crime or even condemn ourselves. That is what Jesus or Judas did. But on the other hand, Peter was offered the same opportunity, but he did not take up his life. When he discovered that he has denied Jesus three times, oh my, this man went outside the house and he wept bitterly like a child. Yes, he utilized his opportunity well. Praise God. Even as for you, during this time of the Good Friday, uh, it, it, it's not time for you to do evil like Judas. It is time for you uh, to, to repent like Peter and, 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 and may you evaluate your life and see whether you're living according to what Jesus would want you to. Did Jesus die for you to commit adultery? Did Jesus die for you to drink off your head? Did Jesus die for you to commit wickedness on the Good Friday? Is it Good Friday uh, uh, because you have, you, you, you have some deals to do. It's only Good Friday when you understand why he died on the cross. Amen. It's only good. It can only be a Good Friday when you understand why he died on the cross. You see, the Bible says that he was delivered because of our offenses. The reason as to why the chief priest, the, the governors could agree together, the soldiers and wicked men could agree to arrest him and take him to Pilate, take him to Herod, eventually crucify him. It's because of our offenses. He was delivered for our offenses. Hallelujah. And therefore, he was not being delivered to be released. Amen. That's why there was someone like Barabbas. Barabbas had to be released so that, so that Jesus could die. You remember when I was talking about the, the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 in the previous episode, I mentioned that the just one was dying for the unjust. So there had to be a just man to die for the many unjust people. And so Jesus had to come, uh, even as Apostle John said, uh, uh, John the, the Baptist said, the book of John chapter 1 verse 29, that behold the lamp of God who takes away the sin of the world. So there had to be a lamp of God, and that is Jesus. The just one died for the many unjust people. And so Barabbas had to be set free. My brothers and sisters, Barabbas is a total representation of the entire human race. Barabbas had to be set free so that Jesus can die. There was no offense that this man had committed. Three times Pilate asked him, asked them, why, why do, do I have to kill this man? They said, crucify him, crucify him. Why should I crucify your king? They said, crucify him, crucify him. What crime has he committed? Crucify him, crucify him. They had no, they had no count whatsoever that would uh, really uh, credit their judgment. And so when Pilate eventually killed, um, uh, discovered that uh, they have crucified him, he, he wrote the verdict. And that was the custom of uh, the jurisdiction of that time. He wrote the verdict and put it on top of the head of Jesus. And he wrote that this is Jesus, King of the Jews. Basically, that is the reason why they, they killed him. That was the, the reason behind the judgment. And therefore, we see therefore by all means that Jesus was killed and crucified for speaking the truth. So, he was delivered for our offenses. And then after he died, a confirmation that truly he died is that, um, is that there was um, an earthquake and that the curtain of the holy tabernacle was torn from the top to the bottom, only confirming that this is the finger of God, and that he has already accepted the sacrifice of his son for the sin of the whole world, that now he is ready to accept people on behalf of the sacrifice that his son has offered. Praise God. Just like Noah, when he offered the sacrifice and God smelled the soothing Aloma, and he began to speak good things. When Jesus offered his sacrifice himself, and he died, God accepted it, and therefore the curtain which was separating the holy place and the most holy place, only one priest could enter there, the high priest, only once per year, it was torn. 
so that no more representation before God by another priest based on the earthly regulations. The Levitical priesthood that was brought to an end so that now Jesus Christ remained to be the high priest who represents you forever before God. If you say amen to that, that would be very important. And therefore God fully accepted the sacrifice of his son. And something else that took place is that during that time of the earthquake, the, the stones were teared and the bodies of the saints who had died long time ago were able to resurrect. And the Bible says that they were seen walking in the holy city. That is the testimony of the Holy Spirit. That confirms to you that from that time henceforth, no more saints are uh, waiting in hell. So that is basically an end of anyone who is regenerated waiting in hell. And therefore, uh, going forward, as you have heard me say many times, is that once you receive Jesus Christ, you receive life. Your spirit is regenerated and is made to sit with God in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that now, when you physically die, you have just slept. So that confirmed that truly Jesus died. Something else that confirmed that Jesus died is that... Uh, uh, is that Nicodemus and Joseph or who, or Joseph who had not consented with what the Jews have done, these were prominent men among the Jews, the, uh, the Jewish council, they went to Pilate and requested the permission to remove Jesus from the cross because it was going to the evening, the beginning of the Sabbath, and therefore he didn't have to continue hanging there on the cross. And therefore, uh, when they came and found that he's dead, uh, indeed, they removed him and they went and buried him amongst the rich. They went and buried him into uh, uh, the, the tomb of the rich men. <laughs> Praise God. That confirmed that truly Jesus died and therefore he was buried. Praise God. And so this pastor that says that he was delivered up because of our offenses, indeed he was delivered before the pirates and he was, he was delivered by, by, by wicked men and he died and indeed he was buried. But the Bible says, and was raised because of our justification. Amen. After he died, he also rose again and his resurrection is very much significant in our life as believers because when he rose again, therefore our faith in Jesus Christ is justified. Amen. I am a son of God and I am so much confident by so saying because this faith is justified by the resurrection of Jesus. He is not on the cross. He is not in the grave. He is alive today and seated we, it's on the right hand of God. So as I wind up in the book of First Corinthians chapter 2, um, chapter 2, and uh, there are verses, um, verses um, 7, it says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Praise God. So now, even as I am speaking these things that Apostle Paul and other apostles wrote, uh, this is a, a wisdom that can only be understood by people who are mature, people who understand what it means to be regenerated. What it means, to, uh, uh, what it means to be born again. People who are born again is because they accepted, they believed that truly Jesus was the Son of God, and that He was born by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that on the cross He was crucified, He died, was buried, and that He rose again on the third day. He is not dead but alive. Amen. So that on Friday He was arrested and was presented to the wicked men. He died, was buried, and he rose again, even as you have read the book of Romans, to say that he was delivered for our offenses, but was rose again for our justification. And so here, Apostle Paul is saying that these things that we speak, 
They actually, they are a mystery. They are hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the ages for our glory. So it is a glorious thing that now we understand that these things from the book of Genesis or the book, the book of Revelation, it was all about Jesus and what indeed uh, he, he was uh, ordained to do uh, so that now God is pleased with his sacrifice. Remember, there's nobody else who pleases God except Jesus. Therefore, for me and you to please Jesus, we have to receive him in our life. We cannot celebrate Good Friday and Easter Monday without Jesus. You need to receive him in your life. You cannot be able to understand the meaning of this celebration. What do you celebrate anyway if you don't have Jesus in you? Therefore, it is Good Friday because you remember he was arrested and he was presented to the, to the wicked men that he may die. His death is so much significant, it's crucial as far as our faith is concerned. But more importantly, his resurrection is all the more, uh, is all the more uh, uh, impactful because it is the one that justifies our faith uh, and indeed justifies what we believe in. And therefore, the, the, the rulers of this age, they did not know who Jesus was. They have never understood him. If they knew him then, referring to Pilate, referring to the governor, to the herald, and the, and the other rulers of that time, if only they understood, then they would not have killed him. They would not have killed the Lord of glory. But then, it had to be so, so that now Christ would be able to bring about the Holy Spirit who now has formed the church which you have become part of. Even now, people who don't believe in Jesus, they don't understand who God is. But as for you, for you to be able to celebrate Good Friday, Easter Monday, receive Jesus as your Lord. And he will reveal so much that has been hidden throughout the ages. Salvation is a gift, but it's a gift that comes on the basis of the revelation of the truth. And the truth is that he died for your sin, was buried, he rose again, he is alive. Amen. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this grace. We can never stop, talk, talk, we can never stop talking about this grace. We can never shy away from telling about this uh, glorious revelation of how you were made manifest and indeed you were made manifest to destroy the work of the devil. You did it on the cross. You dismantled his power over death, and therefore he has got no authority over death. That's why, God, you are freely giving salvation to as many as believe. We thank you for this salvation. Even as uh, people celebrate uh, the Good Friday and the Easter Monday, I pray, God, that you drop this revelation in their life so that they may be transformed, they may be regenerated, and therefore not only will they be waiting for this season, but they shall always, always celebrate you, Jesus, because you are the reason why we died. We thank you once again. We glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, my viewers, and may you continue meditating on this message because it's vital. Thank you, and God bless you.
Yeah. 